Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير My brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the ni'mah of Islam with the blessing of Islam he guided us to it with his infinite mercy 
he allowed us to be born in the Muslim homes. And as you many, many of you know that if we were not born amongst the Muslims the way we are today, we could have chosen to be on the same ways as our parents were. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gave us the greatest ni'mah of Islam. Greatest ni'mah of Islam. Really, if you look at us as Muslims today, even if a Muslim is doing something wrong, he cannot leave it just because his parents were upon. It's wrong. It's a wrong logic. So imagine if you were born in a Hindu household or in a Sikh household. I'm not saying Sikh. I'm saying Sikh. It's different. Sikh is a, another uh, uh, religion. Sikhism. Imagine you were born in their household, or you were born in, in a Christian household, or in a Jewish household, you would still be following your parents. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran again and again. That don't be like the people of Jahiliyyah, that what we saw our Abba and Ajdad, our parents, our elders, our ancestors do, we will be on that. Inna wajadna abana ala umma. Inna wajadna abana ala umma tuma inna ala atharihim muqtadun. Wa inna ala atharihim muqtadun. Surah Zukhruf. And other places as well. Surah Al Baqarah, Makki, Madani. All over the Quran, this message comes again and again and again that your parents' practices should not be your deen. Especially if your parents are upon something wrong. Having said that, this is today, do you know what day it is today? Can anybody tell me what day it is today in the Islamic month? Now which, which day it is of the month? It's the 26th of Rajab, according to the uh, Hijri dates in America. And today, many, many masajid all over the Ummah are talking about the qissa of Rasulullah sallallahu al isra wal-mi'raj, the great journey of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi rather I should say, the great journey of al-isra wal-mi'raj. I wouldn't have talked about it. In fact, if I can think correctly, it's been over eight years that I did not touch this subject on purpose in the month of Rajab. On purpose. Because it is very sad that it has nothing to do with Rajab. It has nothing to do with Rajab. Remember the ongoing topic you're hearing is the things in Rajab that people claim to be. But those things have nothing to do with Rajab. Unfortunately. So Rajab is not a month of Isra al Naraj. And I'll give you two very strong <coughs> evidences. <coughs> we have these books right here. You can look it up if you want to. Zad al Ma'ad fi Hadi Khair al Ibad. One of the great books on the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sirah, his sunnah, his ways, a lot of topics have been covered. That this is your companion through the guidance of Khair al-Ibad, the best of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khair al-Khalqillah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In his guidance, if you want to follow, this should be your companion, Zab al-Ma'ad. You should have this with you. Allah <laughs> Four volumes. Translated as well in many, many uh, other languages. We have, alhamdulillah, the original print in the Arabic here. On, in the very beginning of the book, Juz al-Awwal, page number 11, he talks about the, the journey of Rasulullah of Mi'raj, that when did it happen. So in that section, I'll just read to you a few uh, words from that, uh, that section. He says, Shaykh ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyyah rahimahullah, he's the author of this book, one of the great uh, authoritative scholars of Islam. Lam yakun dalilun ma'alum. There is no dalil we have about this incident or this qissa or this great miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu taking place, the great journey in this month. We have no dalil. La ala shahriha wa la ala ashriha nor the month, nor the ashara, nor the date. Ashara means first ten days, second ten days, 
third sentence, you know the term ashara. Neither the month, neither the part of the month, nor the specific date. We don't have that. And Laysa Fiha, also he says, I'll just quickly say the translation, that we have nothing that reaches to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or even his companions. Even his companions. Because even if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa didn't say anything, if companions said something, you know, from their qiyas or from their understanding or from what they might have thought to be, we would have some credibility of that. There would be some wasn't, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu companions, we take them as also hujjah for us in being. But nothing reaches to them as well. Now, if something that is not known to Prophet or Prophet doesn't tell you, and those who lived around him, believed in him, walked with him, talked with him, spent time with him, were educated by him, won't tell you anything, how could we make up something like that and just, subhanAllah, continue on that? Fathul Bari, another great evidence, very strong reference. In fact, every Islamic university and madrasa that teaches Bukhari, you know, in the, in the alim course, when people become scholars, they are required to read the six books, Kutub Sitta. Last time, if you I read, only one brother counted, there was, I mentioned seven. Because I included Mu'atta Malik also. Because of the fact that some ulama include Mu'atta Malik into the six, not Ibn Majah. That's why. So those who study these six books, you are required to study them to graduate. <coughs> you are required to pass a test of those books. So number one of those is Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari. And Sahih al-Bukhari is taught with its commentary, with its sharh. Because it's very big sharh that is com uh, uh, based off of 12 to 13 volumes. And you're required to study that. And so this is something that every sheikh has studied if he is a sheikh, not a big sheikh. <laughs> okay. So if sheikh has studied it, for those shuyukh, this is the dalil. Regardless of which school of thought, Maliki, Hanafi, Shafi, Hanbali, whatever school of thought there, but they go to an Islamic madrasa or university of Sharia, they study this. Alhamdulillah, our masjid's library is lucky to have this in the original uh, uh, print in the Arabic language. <coughs> Volume 7, page 203. Imam Ibn Hajr al Asqalani rahimahullah, <coughs> says that subhanAllah, we have no evidence of when. When this miracle of Rasulullah took place, some say, oh, it happened before the prophethood, before he became a prophet. Of course, this is questionable. Some say it happened after the prophethood, walakin, the year qabl al hijrah, am qabl al hijrah. Al am qabl al hijrah, the year before hijrah. And this is where most scholars agree that it definitely happened before Prophet Muhammad migrated to Medina after he came from five. You know, the very tough day in his life. Umm al Mu'minin Aisha anha once asked Rasulullah, oh Rasulullah, was there a day tougher than the day of Uhud in your life? Because they saw Rasulullah, he, he, he was almost killed by the, by the enemies of Islam. Almost. Right? You all know that. He said, Aisha, there is no day tough, tough day in my life than the day of life. I didn't even know whether I was on earth or where I was. So most scholars actually agree that it happened before the Hijrah. But in terms of month, you have all over the place. Rajab, Rabi'ul Akhir, Ramadan, Shawwal, Hatta Ulama of Sufiya, you know, our Ahl Tariqa, Rahmatullah alayhi wa may Allah have mercy on all of them. I respect them, I have a Quran for them, but even they didn't know. How would they know? Because Prophet didn't tell us, Sahaba didn't tell us, how would they know? Very simple. And just don't get confused that, oh, why we don't know these dates? Muslims did not care about the dates of these events. Oh, I was born on this date, on this time, 9 o'clock, 10 p.m. They didn't have clocks, they didn't have calendars. No calendar was established. No concepts of birthdays to begin with. But subhanAllah, now today is the 26th. SubhanAllah, as the moon will set, they will be gathering the sheikhs. You know, unfortunately, sheikhs also, not just people, they need a date. They need a day to have food, ta'am, parties, events, gatherings, you know, there will be singing, there will be anashid, mashallah, subhanallah, Muslims are dying right and left, Muslim women, or non-Muslim women, 
women in general, their honors are being taken. People in gangs are attacking women. This had never happened in history that gangs of people are raping women. This is happening. All over the world. People are being put in prisons, they're being tortured, they're being killed. People are being bombed right and left by Muslims, non-Muslim, Muslim to Muslim, non-Muslim to Muslim, Muslim to non-Muslim. There's fitna and fasad everywhere. Shaykh doesn't care about that. No worry about bringing Islam in people's homes or introducing the mission, the message of Islam to this world. By God, if, if we introduce Islam in a proper way to the world, this world will accept it from their own, from their own themselves without fighting or anything. We say, wow, this deen talks about justice. This deen talks about compassion. This deen talks about forgiveness. This deen talks about rule of law. Not the rule of man, rule of law. But no, but we're not doing the job. We worry about rituals. We need a day. We need mamlud. We need this. We need that. A'udhu billah. Every khutbah Prophet used to say, Kullu bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatun finnaat. But unfortunately, we forgot the reminder of Rasulullah that he used to give us in every khutbah. Almost every khutbah of Rasulullah is it's called khutbah al hajj He used to say that. In fact, the talks also that he gave, many times he included these words. That deviance is mis every deviance, innovative methods in Islam are misguidance because Islam is complete. Or else you just accept that Islam is defective. It needs things. We need to act things. Just say that. Why do you go introduce Islam to go, oh, alhamdulillah, it's a complete way of life. No, it's not. You're practically actually not doing that. You're lying. When you tell others about Islam, al al Alhamdulillah, yawm akmatu lakum deenam. Well, you, every now and then you introduce something new. And then you want to do it. And the ones who don't do it, you say, oh, he's crazy. He's something, you know, he's Wahhabi. When somebody talks about Tawheed, this is the situation of the Ummah. Somebody talks about monotheism, he's Wahhabi. When somebody talks about uh, love of Rasulullah's family, he's Shia or he has Shia germs. Imam al Shafi'i, rahmatullahi, many Shafi'is are sitting here. When he wrote the Munaqib of Ahl al Bayt, uh, uh, Bayt Shah, poetry, people started accusing him of being a Rafili. Not just Shi'i, but also Rafili. And people were going for Hajj. He said, he wrote a Bayt Shah. I couldn't bring it with me. It's very beautiful. It's present in Imam al Bayhaqi brought this also. He said, go in Hajj in Mina when you see people and tell them this is what Shafi'i says. That, I, I think I remember the first Misra, first uh, part. In kana hubbu ali Muhammadin rafda, if the love of Ali Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the love of his family is rafidiyya, you think I am, because of that I am Ravli, then tell people I am one of them. And if talking about Sunnah and Tawheed of Rasulullah is Wahhabiyya, then I am one of them too. This is not what Shafi said, I am including this. Don't play with these labels, don't label one another. Take deen based on Dalil, based on Burhan. This is Deen al-Haq, wa qul al-Haq wa zahaq al -baqir. Truth has come. This is the deen of truth. We don't take fairy tales, you know, gappe and, you know, all kinds of nonsense stories. We go based on the haq, based on the dalil. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullah. <laughs> this journey of Rasulullah as you heard me, um, um, uh, now some of the people might come in the end, I don't know about them, but most of you are here, Alhamdulillah. So, it's good to mention some of the facts, facts, the factual things that did take place in this event, and this uh, journey of Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Ladhi barakna hawlahu limuriyahu min ayatina. Innahu wa sami'u al-Basir. Subhan al-Ladhi. The very beginning 
the very beginning, first ayah of Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel, I believe it's Surah number 15, <coughs> Juz number 15 as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Blessed is he, glorified is he, free from all errors. Remember the khutbah of man as Khalifa of Allah. Subhana. What, what, when we say Subhanallah and when we say Alhamdulillah, what do we mean by that? Very famous dhikr, most of you do it, but many people don't know why they say Subhanallah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Subhana about himself, he's saying he's free from all defects, free from all errors. <coughs> Who is very much capable of doing this? This is not something that has already happened, a mistake happened, a'udhu billah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting actually a foundation here. That know that he's capable of this. What did he do? Asra bi abdihi. Asra bi abdihi. He took his abd. Not habibihi. Not this, not that. Abdihi. Look at the beauty of the Quran, my brothers and sisters. Wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned some great thing of Rasulullah or that great thing that is given to him, he mentions him as his abd. Abd. Evidence, the lead. Surah Al Furqan. Tabarakal ladin al zal al Furqan ala abdi. Abdihi li yakuna bil alamin al nadir. The one who revealed Furqan, Quran Kareem. Abdi. Wa in kuntum fi raibim mimma nazzalna ala abdina. Our abd. Allah. Mi'raj. So we're, we're talking about Isra only. Mi'raj. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى عَبْدَ again. عبد سيدنا داود عليه السلام نعم العبد إنه أواب عيسى عليه السلام introduces himself إني عبد الله عبد الله not حبيب الله not خليل الله these are all great titles خليل الله in fact is the closest of all the عباد of الله سبحانه وتعالى but when Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions some great gift that Allah gave to Rasulullah some something great that was given to him, he mentions him as Abd. That is why Rasulullah explained to us who is Abd. Some of you are Abd of your wife. Some of you are Abd of daughter. Some of you are Abd of dirham. And he said, Ta'is Abd dinar wa Abd dirham. Doomed, perished, is the one who worshipped the dollar. Nobody worshipped the dollar. You never take the dollar out and say, oh, you know, Allah Akbar, astaghfirullah. <laughs> you don't do that. What is Abd? Somebody who ghayatul hub, extreme of love, and due to display, to due to that hub, you display that love by worshiping your ma'bud. Then that's when you become Abdullah. May Allah make you and I true ibadul Rahman. That's Abd. So Allah says, I took my Abd, my slave, my servant. This is a great honor. Imam al Qutubi says in his tafsir, he says, I have two great honors. Due to which I feel like I am flying in the heavens. I'm not on earth. So one is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes me among his ibad. May Allah make you an eye among those. And second, he says, I am the ummah of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He calls him Ahmad in his bait shah there. He said a bait shah there. Poetry. In his tafsir. So he says, my Abd, I took him Laylan. Laylan min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Laylan, here is something very beautiful uh, the Mufassirin have said. means part of the night. doesn't mean the whole night. Laylan, it's nakara. Part of the night. Not the whole night. Allah. Allah is capable of this. That's why he starts with Subhana. That I am capable of this. He's free from all defects or errors or something incomplete. I will from where? From Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Haram, you all know where it is. Masjid al-Aqsa, you know where it is. Some, unfortunately, say, oh, it's in the heavens. Masjid al-Aqsa is there in Jerusalem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate it. We are more free than our brothers in Jerusalem who cannot pray there. Many of them are stopped every day, every Friday from prayers. Many of them get kicked out of the masjid. And they are planning to throw the masjid down, to dump the masjid down. May Allah liberate it. So this is where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went. Alladhi barakna hawla. Allah Akbar. That whole area, my brothers and sisters, is a blessed land. Allah blessed it with many things, with provisions of dunya, with rizq, and also 
blessed with many, many prophets and messengers of Allah in that land. All Bilal Sham. When we say Sham, we don't mean just Syria. Talk about, you know, parts of Jordan, Palestine, today's Palestine, you know, occupied Palestine, and also Syria. All of that is Bilal Sham. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate it and give it true leaders, uh, uh, true believers, inshallah. Like uh, our uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn Khattab So Allah says, to that blessed land, that who's not only that place but also its surroundings are all blessed, took him there لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina To show him from our signs, not our own self. لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina Allah is saying, my signs. To show him that, not myself. A'udhu billah. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Basir. He is Samir and al Basir. No one can be Samir like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can hear like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one can see like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quickly, I will say something here about Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. Inshallah, next week we'll hear some things related to Mi'raj, which is in Surah Najm. Unfortunately, a rumor was spread among the Tabi'een that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Allah in Mi'raj, saw Allah in Mi'raj. <coughs> I might touch base that a little bit next time. But this is Muttafaqun Alayh, Bukhari and Muslim both have it. Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha, when the young man asked her, she said, do you know what you have asked me? All the hair of my skin have moved, I have goosebumps. What kind of thing are you saying that Rasulullah saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And by the way, this is not an honor actually to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something big that I'm going to say. But take it with Iman. One of the most distinctive features of your Iman, Surah Al-Baqarah, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهُ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ First quality, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْرِ you believe in Allah without saying it. You want to destroy the iman of Rasulullah by saying he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa Allahu Akbar and you say shair, bait, shair, you know, poetry and all that. You will destroy his iman by saying he saw Allah. No, he didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Sunnah, Shia, most of them, all groups of Muslims say Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he does, then actually you're lowering his status. You're not actually honoring him. This is lowering his status. That's why Umul Mu'mineen said, remember young man, three things I will tell you. If anyone tells you any of those three th things, know that he's a liar. Three things. And this is muttafaqun alayh. Bukhari Muslim both have it. If anyone comes to you and tells you that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew the unseen, or he knows the unseen, all the unseen that is hidden, everything that is not known to us that our eyes don't see, he, he knows he's a liar. Why? And she gave an evidence. She said, read Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada. Fatir al Samawat wa Allah is that. Who knows everything that is present and that is hidden, He's the one who knows that. Number two, she says, if anyone comes and tells you, I have certain type of knowledge, and people do say that, by the way, and they quote a hadith of Abu Hurairah also, made up, made up hadith, that Rasulullah said, I have certain part of ilm, they misquote the hadith, that I have spread and certain ilm I have not given to people. She said, if Rasulullah did not give that, or he gave to certain people parts of deen, and he did not give it to the ummah, then he did not deliver the message. He didn't hide anything. Third, if anyone says to you that Rasulullah saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a liar, because Quran says, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار وهو الخبير Your vision has limit. No eyes can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you encompassed him, enclosed him in your eyes, this means Allah is not muhid, he is muhat. He is now surrounded by your eyes. He's not limited, uh, unlimited, he's limited now. No, he has the eyes that he sees everything. You don't have the eyes that you will see the one who is the source of everything. No one can see him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. Amen. Give us tawfiq to honor the months of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way. And may Allah bring peace in our lands. One of the greatest violations of this month is the bloodshed, killings that Muslims are doing. And these are Muslims are doing in the times of Jahiliyyah.
times of Jahiliyyah, Kuffar used to put their horses and block everything, no fighting. And now Muslims are killing each other in the name of Qawmiyyah, Wataniyyah, Firaq, Madahib, A'udhu Billah, power struggle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. Don't be a part of that. While sitting here, if you're supporting it, inshallah you will get the punishment for that. Because you're part of that bloodshed. Don't support it. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you support the valid, you are as much valid. Because if you are in that situation, you would be doing the same thing. So this is the greatest violation of Rajab. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa from the haraj, from the bloodshed, from killing one another or from killing any innocent beings. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma aminna fi uqanina. O oh Allah, give peace in our lands. Allahumma aslih ummata Muhammad. Fix the affairs of this Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fix the affairs of our shabab of Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our youth, O oh Allah, guide our youth. Bring them to Islam. Bring Islam in our homes. Allahumma faraj an ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma arham ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa fi na'adab al-nar. Rabbana wa adkhilna al-jannata ma'a al-abrar. Ya azizu ya ghafar ya rab al-alamin. Ibad Allah rahimakum Allah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsani wa ita'i bil-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wa al-munkari wa al-baghi ya'izukum la'allakum tabakkarun. Qala Allah ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhu ladina man yusallu alayhi wa sallimu tasallimahu wa aqimu s-salam.